And welcome back, everybody. I have a feeling if I go out the door, these guys are going to kill me. And I have to go from his, you know, go down the drain pipe. But let's just I couldn't see. leave the hotel with the manuscript. It was probably what those thugs were looking for. Right. Okay. So that was already... That was already kind of my thought process. Oh, shit. So I knocked my microphone all around. So we're going to want to go out here. The cobbles of the alleyway looked very distant and very hard. Can I take sheets or something? I mean, that's what I... The cabinet was empty. Can I take his sheets? I mean, like, I'd rather not take the sheets of the guy whose room I'm breaking into. The assassin had been too smart to... So nothing... There was nothing else in the pot. There was nothing... I mean, I feel like I got what I wanted, basically. How the fuck do I get out then? Alright. Hmm. I mean, it's clear I have to go down here. I resisted a childish desire to toss things from a height. Oh, could I? I knew this was no way to treat an ancient manuscript. Well, but I couldn't let it fall into the hands of the goons waiting outside. All right, yeah. I was gonna try and get down, but uh, this works too. I think we have successfully uh... Hold it right there. Search him again, Flat. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking this is a you cannot die Nothing, game. Guido. Okay, let him go. And thank you. If the manuscript was what Flap and Guido were after, they were going to be disappointed. I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out. Excellent. Back in Nico's apartment. Hi, how are you? Oh, hi. Come in, Josh. I'm glad you've been sitting around doing absolutely nothing while I'm doing all the hard work. Do you have a boyfriend? Not anymore. There was someone. A guy in my final year, but it didn't work out. Neither did my degree. I'm sorry. I'm not. Tell me more about your family. When I was a little girl, I used to spend the winter with my grandfather and grandma. They were the best times. Warm and safe in their tiny cottage. My grandfather rolled cigarettes while Grandma made hot chocolate and cakes. One day, he stopped his scrolling. He put the lid back on his tobacco jar and took me in his arms. I laughed and wriggled, but he hushed me to be silent. With his unshaven chin all scratchy in my ear, he told me his secret. What did he say? He said, I don't smoke, but she likes to think I do. What a weird old man. Don't call my grandfather weird. He was the nicest guy ever. I wish I was back in that cottage instead of this crummy apartment in this noisy city. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? <laughs> Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? No. Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, oh. I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? 
Uh, hey, Nico, shake hands with me. No chance, Buster. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy. Yeah, we already got that far, so. I found this matchbook in the killer's hotel room. By the way, I got into the killer's hotel room. It's from the Club Alamut. Never heard of it. Is there anything written inside it? No. What were you expecting? If this was a movie, there'd be a clue. A name or an address. That's no use. There aren't even any matches in it. Oh, well. I'll keep it as a souvenir. I found this in the killer's room. What is it? A credit card? ID. Thomas Merlin of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Never heard of him or the company. Bango. You're just not going to believe what I've found. It's not another part of the clown's costume, is it? It's a medieval manuscript. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible. Is this what he took from Plantark? It could be, which means it's worth enough to kill for. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh, yeah. Maybe they couldn't afford one each. <laughs> what of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? Their official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. This guy, named Hughes de Payen, arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim armies. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and number. They were so rich. Even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. The last Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. Oh, jeez. So the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for 600 years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. What? No. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Look there, two guys. A knight with a crystal ball. Now, there's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum mea lux videbis. By my teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin? Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? <laughs> I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid, Mom carried me out of the movie theater. She didn't frighten me in the least. Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. It was the flying monkeys and the Wizard of Oz that did it for me. I did not like the flying monkeys. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is the Minotaur. But he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, even if it was the bottom half. What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. 
Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? I know a guy who specializes in medieval studies. His name is Lobino. Huh. <laughs> Some stuffy old fossil who gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. Far from it. Andre isn't stereotypical professor you have in mind. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the Krun Museum. I'll give you the address. Do, do you want to help at all, or no? You're just going to... All right. I have to go. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobino at the Krun Museum. All right. The Krun Museum. Not very big, is it? Attention! Please do not open the window, monsieur. Don't you think it's kind of stuffy in here? Better stuffy than dead. What's the problem? Fumes from car exhausts? Not just that, monsieur. There's a new bag of bar opened up across the street. The Laughing Buffalo. So what's the problem? They cook their burgers on a charcoal grill. And the fat falls on the open flame. The amount of organic compound and smoke particles released is astounding. Since they open, local air pollution has doubled. And it stinks like a funeral pile. That is why I keep the windows closed. Oh, well, pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Are you Lobino? Oh, no. Fancy you mistaking me for him. No, I am the deputy custodian. But Labano does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it there. He studied here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Where is he? Uh. Excuse me. Sorry, yawning. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. That's and they ask you to park it. their cars? They ask me to park the... No, no, no. They assume I am an authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Do you recognize this ID pass? No. Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? Oh, no. I don't frequent places like that. What does this tool mean to you? That belongs in a museum. <laughs> Pardon? It is a priceless historical artifact, if I am not mistaken. No, it's a plain old tool for lifting drain covers. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. Is there any reason why I should? I guess not. Can we ask, like, where is Labano? Do you recognize this red nose? I don't think so. What do you make of this tissue? It is absolutely disgusting, monsieur. Would you like to shake my hand? Uh, not while I'm on duty, monsieur. Thanks for your help. Well, we can look at shit. In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! Was that? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry. I was excited. All right. Um Leave it alone. That closet is over three thousand years old. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. I mean my guess is
Don't even think of climbing in there, monsieur. You'll be suffocated. I'll... Well, I mean, clearly I have to... Uh, Greece? No. Uh, buzz it? I'm not sure what that did. This is ridiculous. I could be here for hours. Um. Don't open it. So. No, 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 don't. If he goes to fix the window, should I? Is that where? I don't know of anything else I could use on that to... Alright, let's try talking to him. Pardon me? Oui, monsieur? Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod? That belonged to John D. What's the importance of John D's tripod? D was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Udini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. Well, whatever he was. That is the tripod he used in his experiments. What kind of experiments did John D. perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Uh, didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. All right. Thanks for your help. I mean, Watch out! You will have that done on top of us! Okay, so now... Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely an order to how you solve certain puzzles. Which I'm generally not a big fan of, that, like, you know, this totem pole shakes. Oh, shit, 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 shit. I didn't mean to click there. Oh, maybe it's not, actually. As I froze, oh. then tried to get myself together and act nonchalantly. No, monsieur. 
No e no. Ok, ok. Well, I am going to cut here, folks. So, as always, thanks for watching. Tune in the next. Thanks for watching, everybody.